Uh, I want to go through some Nine Inch Nails albums because I'm a very big Nine Inch Nails fan. And uh, I thought I'd go through uh, all the releases I have, which is a lot more than just the bass albums. I have all those except the newest two, which I don't think have a physical release yet. Um, but I have pretty much everything worth getting that you can get on CD because uh, I, I only I only get CD. Um, I thought I'd talk about them a little. Uh, just go through, you know, share my love of Nine Inch Nails. There's a lot of them, I think. I have, I don't know, 20. They have 12 main albums, but a lot of other stuff. So here's Pretty Hate Machine, the first one. Forgot about the glare thing. Uh, the back. This was, um, this is their first release. And a lot of bands don't really nail their first release and they don't really find their sound until their, uh, until their second one. And that's personally what I found to be the case with this. Um, I didn't... Nine, Nine Inch Nails fans will hate me for it, but uh, I didn't really like this album. I think there's a couple songs I like, Terrible Lie, um, Something I Can Never Have, but I think they're better done on other albums. Like, I think, I think when I see them live, like on Closure, they're, um, what the fuck do I put this back in? They're better. You know, like I see, I see, uh, you know, Head Like a Hole or Terrible Eye or something live, and I'm like, yeah, it's great, right? But I listen to it on the album, and I'm like, like, what I like about Nine Inch Nails, they, they have a really interesting kind of complex sound. And even on albums with like with teeth and the slip, where it's it's a lot simpler, it's it uh, it still has that satisfying sound. But um, on Pretty Hate Machine, it doesn't have the interesting concepts. It doesn't have the interesting uh, lyrics and sound, and there just isn't a lot to it. But with Broken, the second album, that was when they brought forth the really harsh industrial sounds. The album is just a a big blast of industrial anger, and uh, that appeals to me. Oh, that's got got the got the nin, like the eye there. But if I close this up, you can kind of see the eye, and then the the text is all just a lyric. So this is pretty simple design wise, uh, but I love this album. It's fantastic. It's really satisfying to listen to. It doesn't have the depth and complexity of. Uh, succeeding albums but it's it's fun you know it's like satisfying and they have fixed this is a remix of broken it's called fixed it's uh it's not very good it's not very good it's it's I don't know, it's been forever since i heard it in march of the pigs which i'm assuming was the first maybe second i think it was the first single for the downward spiral but this has a few extra songs in it this has a uh, this has a remix of March of the Pigs, a remix of Reptile, and then I think a remix of something else. Um, but A Violet Fluid is a new song that's on there. I like this. I, I was buying stuff like this. I didn't actually buy Broken or Fixed. I, I got them. Um, I got a few of them, like three or four albums we, we already have, and I, they were given to me. <clears throat> but I started buying stuff like like this when I was at the peak of being into Nine Inch Nails, because you have to be pretty into a band to order singles online that only have a few songs and some of them are remixes. And you have the Downward Spiral. This, I think, is is their, you know, the masterpiece. Um, the Fragile may, may be the magnum opus, but I think the Downward Spiral is, is more consistent, it's more concise. It's very deep, it's incredibly dark and disturbing in a lot of areas, and it's it's fascinating musically, it's beautiful, it's ugly, you know, it's it it mixes those in a fascinating way. It's it's such an amazing album that is so uh timelessly gripping. Um 
I think it's one of the all-time best. Just just ever made. It, I, I'm I'm really in love with this album. It's it's just oh, and there's um it has a stylistic crack in it, which is weird. Oh, hold on, let me pull out the art, right? If you can see the art, it has these did this this section here has some like I don't know, fucking antennae uh protruding from it. You can you can kind of see. Right like right there. And the uh, the jewel casing is like stylistically, I'm assuming, intentionally cracked to reflect that. So there's actually an actual crack in the jewel casing right here, in right here. So that's pretty cool. Very interesting. You don't really see that. Then we have closer. Um, this is the UK version of the single. Um, which is split into two parts. It's it's a it's a two CD single. Uh, we have further away, which is just remixes of closer, and then the fuck does this say? Closer to God, which has um, which has some new songs. Memorabilia is a cover. Closer to God is like, I guess it's a remix of, of closer, but it's like an alternate version. It it like different vocal take and everything. So it's it's very cool. And then there's, um, oh yeah, there's March of the Fuckheads, <laughs> my favorite title. Uh, I think that's a remix of March of the Pigs. Yeah, it's fun. They have Disturbed. This is like a, an interview, actually. I found this at the, uh, at a, at, like at a CD store. I feel, I, I feel like the people who had it there didn't know what it was, but it's, yeah, it's an interview. An interview with Trent Reznor, um, in like 94 and he talks about the Dandruff Spiral. It's very low quality, it, it sounds terrible. Um, and it's just like this bootleg interview disc I just, I just found. Uh, further down the spiral is a remix of Dandruff Spiral. This is where they really got the remixes right. I like that blue. This feels really thick. At least the others weren't thick. Um, This is cool. It's more collaborative. Actually, I don't know if it's more collaborative, but it, it's less... It, it's good. <laughs> it's actually pleasant to listen to. Um, yeah, it has original compositions by Aphex Twin, who's a very interesting artist that I've, that I've heard a bit of. Um, and the Danroth Spiral the Bottom is probably my favorite Nine of Sales remix. It's a very different... It's, it's a fascinating reimagination of the song. Very cool. Um, Quake, which is just the game Quake. Um, I wanted the physical copy of the soundtrack, um, so I just bought the game. And I haven't played it. Uh, you can't play this disc on uh, modern PCs. But if you put it into a CD drive, you can rip the music. Um, so I just I bought Quake on like Steam and then used like Quake Spasm to make it less fucky. So that's where I'm gonna play it with the music, which was a difficult fucking maneuver, but I finally got it to work. Quake, the video game Quake. We got uh the perfect drug remixes. This text is like artists who worked on it. So there's like Meat Beat Manifesto. Uh, let's see the Orb Space Time Continuum Plug. I don't know who those people are. Um, the big problem with this is that it doesn't have the original song. It has five or maybe six, depending on your version, remixes of the perfect drug. It does not have the perfect drug. So you're buying a uh, you're buying a physical disc to get a bunch of remixes. Um, they're good, but it's a, like it's not a single. It's a, it's an EP of remixes of one song. That just doesn't make sense as a release. Closure. This is a live album. And this is actually a dual VHS box set. So I have two VHSs and it's still sealed. I actually got a sealed copy of a VHS live album from 1997. Uh, not very expensive either. And I can never open it. I can never open it. Um... 
instead I downloaded the uh, the DVD prototype and that's how I watch it so the first uh, disc or the first tape is live stuff um, a bunch of shows throughout um, you know leading up to 97 and uh, And a lot of backstage stuff, you know, like the time, uh, they were on stage one time and, and Trent was fucking around with a mic stand and he, he threw it backwards, uh, and it, it hit the drummer in the head and like sliced his head open and he was bleeding, but he kept playing. He got a towel and started dabbing the blood pouring out of his head while continuing to play. <laughs> Um, and then there was a time, like, I think one of their guitars shredded his fingers and they had to cancel, like, a major show. You know, just Nine Inch Nails things. Um, oh, and the, the other tape is all the music videos up to 97. So I actually own the music videos to, like, The Perfect Drug and Wish and other songs. Closer, I, I guess, is the other one that I like. Day the World Went Away. This is a single. I found this in Vancouver as well. Um, the significant thing about this is that it has the quiet version of The Day the World Went Away, which I actually prefer to the original. There's two other versions. There's a still version, which is like the quiet one. It's a lot quieter. And then there's the quiet version, which is, um... It feels like what the song was meant to sound like to me. The original on the Fragile is, uh... is not, not my favorite. It's good. It's not my favorite, though. So, the Fragile. Um, the Big Boy album. I mentioned that the Downward Spire was their best, but the Fragile is like, I think it's Trent's favorite. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fans' favorites. It's a huge album. It's a double album with a total of 23 songs on the CD version, but if you have the vinyl, or the definitive edition, which is the one I've listened to, it has 25 songs. Um, it's, it's packed with amazing stuff. It's, it's up there with the Downward Spiral. It's probably only my second or third favorite album by the band. After the Dandruff Spiral and maybe after not the actual events, but I, I think it's probably my, the second best for me. Um, it's interesting. My main thing with it is just that it's it's a little all over the place and it feels inconsistent. Um, it doesn't feel like a complete satisfying piece in the way that albums like Add Violence, the Dandruff Spiral, uh, not the actual events do, they're not, it's, it's not as solid as an album. Um, but it's full of amazing songs, like Somewhat Damaged and The Big Calm Down, which are just fantastic, and I love them. Things Falling Apart, this is a remix of The Fragile, um, also pretty good. Uh, Slipping Away is uh, a remix of Into the Void, but like Closer to God, it, it does, it does, it, it, it's a different vocal take, like it's a whole different song. Um, that's just taken from Into the Void, but it's like a whole new thing. And I hadn't heard it until recently, and I've been a fan for a few years, so it was cool to discover like a new song that I really liked. It has a cover of Metal by Gary Newman. Um, it has The Great Collapse, which is cool. The main thing about it, if you can read that, is that it contains... And okay, The Fragile is a 25-song album. Massive album, right? Things Falling Apart is a 10-track album as a remix. And with those 10 tracks, they included a few new songs. That's awesome. And for the remaining seven remixes um, that were just remixes, they included three remixes of the same song. Three remixes of Starfuckers. Which is really odd because Starfuckers is like the outlier on the album, like the, the song that doesn't fit in. And personally, I really like it, but it, it, it's a very, it's probably the worst representation of the album on there. And they chose to remix it three times on the album. Um, instead of doing other songs, which is, is just weird, but it's still worth buying because Slipping Away is awesome. I love Slipping Away. And then we have And All That Could Have Been Live. This is a double thing. Um, that was released with Still, which we'll check out in a minute. This CD uh, was just a live album. It doesn't have a DVD, 
The DVD is somewhere out there. There were visuals, but I don't think Trent really liked them, so he doesn't. He didn't put a lot into making them easy to access. Um, but the, this version of Terrible Lie, I like a lot better than the album version of Terrible Lie. It's fun. It's heavy. It's 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 punchy. It's satisfying to listen to. I like it. But it's it's just like a, it's the audio to a live album. So like, why would I listen to that most of the time? Still. Still is the hidden gem. Still is the is the amazing album that you haven't heard unless you're a fan of Nine Inch Nails. Um, it's not one of their main albums. <clears throat> it, it's nine songs, um, four of which are stripped down versions of older songs. We have Something I Can Never Have, The Fragile, uh, The Becoming, and Day the World Went Away, all of which are awesome. Really cool spins on the songs. Then we have four brand new songs, um, well five, uh, and four of them are instrumental, beautiful pieces, really haunting, um, very Nine Inch Nails, and then and All That Could Have Been, which is, is not instrumental, and it is one of their best songs, one of their best songs, one of the most beautiful, painful, powerful pieces of music, and still is a remarkable album as, as something that captures um, emotional pain but in, in kind of like a, a way that really stings, but is also really beautiful. I really like that blue as well. Um, yeah, I love it. It's amazing. Next one is With Teeth. Now, this was the comeback album. Um, the last album before this, that was a full album, was The Fragile, which was a lot to live up to, especially, you know, the downward spiral. Five years later, you get The Fragile. They went on hiatus. Um, Trent recovered from addiction, went to rehab, and he came back, spent a few years uh, getting used to that and writing, and he came out with With Teeth, which is a more straightforwardly electronic rock album. Um, it doesn't have the complexity, it doesn't have the depth in the same way, it's not as fascinating as the last two albums, and for a lot of fans it was disappointing because of the way the music was done. But I loved it. I love With Teeth. It was the third one I listened to after Broken and the Downward Spiral. Um, there were four main songs that I listened to first to get into Nine Inch Nails. The first one was Closer, and then the other ones were Gave Up, uh, yeah, like the studio version of Gave Up, the studio version of Every Day is exactly the same and only. And those last two songs are on this album, so that's, you know, that's why I bought it. Um, I love this album. I think the first half is a lot weaker. We got songs like The Collector, Love Is Not Enough. Pretty forgettable, not bad. Um, it opens pretty strongly with All The Love In The World. Um, but it's very different. It's really not what you expect from Nine Inch Nails, but it's a cool song. It just takes getting used to. Um, but when the second half hits with Only, it's just... Every song is so fucking good. Getting Smaller is a banger only is a really cool song, and I think one of their most important to the band. Um, one of their best, Sunspots, it's like one of those like deep tracks you don't hear a lot, but if you're a fan, you know how awesome it is. Besides you in Time is... is... Yeah, it's hard to describe the way that song sounds. It It's... I guess it's atmospheric in a way it it really takes you away and right where it belongs is is beautiful but again in that very painful kind of crushing way i really like version two as well and uh in the japanese edition as well as the definitive edition of the album we have home which is still in there and i really like home as well so yeah great album awesome album um it's different but it, it's always it's always a shame when you hear an album get overlooked or get worse reception, not because it's bad, but because it doesn't fit into what the band was. Um, another example that I can think of was Outside by David Bowie, which was my personal favorite. Um, surprise, surprise, because it, it, it sounds more like Nine Inch Nails. It, it was definitely a product of the time of the dark rock music that was going around in the 90s. Um, and Outside sounds like that. It, else, it sounds like a, a David Bowie that adapted to that you know, dark alt-rock scene in the 90s, and it's a really cool album. Um, but it's not very well received. The narrative was pretty disjointed, um, which is fair. It's like impossible to follow. It doesn't make any sense the way that it's structured, but I don't think uh, an album needs to 
to do that. I think it just needs to be interesting. I think it needs to take you away and make you feel something. And it accomplishes that. And um, I don't know. It, it, it's a shame when you see that. All right, next one. So this is from With Teeth Era. This is Beside You in Time, which I recently got, I think. I think this is the most recent album I bought. Maybe Things Falling Apart. I think this is my most recent. This is a live album from like 2006. Um, and it has, it, it also has some, uh, some like studio performances that I enjoyed like uh, like The Collector, which is not a song that I really like that much. I think it's, it's one of their worst and most forgettable, which isn't saying much because in general, you know, Nine Inch Nails is, is pretty great. And even when they're not super great, they're still pretty good. Um, and the live version of that album, or the, the, the studio like rehearsal version was, uh, was a lot better. So I was like, wow, I'm enjoying The Collector, that's cool. We have Year Zero. Um, this is an album that within the community, I more often hear described as overrated than good. Maybe a lot of people do like it, but I always hear like, ah, this is the overrated album. You know, like The Great Destroyer is cool for the first half, but then the other half it's like dubstep. And I'm like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> you know, like, is that not, is that like bad? Like it's, I don't know, it's, it's interesting. It's very electronic. Um, it's a big album, it's a concept album. A lot of stuff on here. There's a lot of like cool, uh, like virtual or alternate reality shit going on at the time. It's uh, very political. Oh, this disc, when you put it into a CD player, uh, it's supposed to heat up and turn black, I think. I don't know if this one does that, but there was supposed to be a version where the CD changed color and then revealed a link to the Year Zero website where you could participate in the alternate reality game. It's awesome, it's a big album. It's cool. Ghosts 1 to 4, this is very unusual. Uh, this is a dark ambient album. It's almost two hours long. It's 36 songs spread into, or split into four segments of nine. So Ghosts 1 is tracks 1 through 9. Ghosts 2 is tracks 10 through uh, 18, all the way up to 36. You usually see it incorrectly titled because... Um, the songs are titled like, like the first song is called One Ghosts One, then it's Two Ghosts One, Three Ghosts One, the last one is, is 36 Ghosts Four, um, you know, it goes like 18 Ghosts Two and then 19 Ghosts Three, like that's how it's titled. So usually on Spotify and YouTube, you see it incorrectly titled because they think that's, that's just a track number when it's actually like the only way to tell what the song is. It's got some interesting art. Uh, there's one piece of art in particular, I don't know if it's in here, but if it is, I want to show it. Oh yeah, a lot of this is just pictures like this. Ghost of to 4 has a particular art style, though. Um, it had an art book released. Piece of art for every song. There's this piece of art from, from that art book that's just these birds flying, but it's like really gray. Like the coloring is like really gray and like cold and kind of empty. And it has kind of an eerie feel to it. My One of my friends sat, found it relaxing. I found it like eerie and like, I thought it was cool. But I, I, I had this, one of the pictures in my photography compilation, the, the lone crow in the wind really reminded me of that. And I thought that was cool. So I like ghosts. Um, it's kind of divided amongst the community. You hear a good song, you don't remember what it is because of the way they're, they're titled. They don't have titles, they just have numbers. And, uh, you know, it's just dark ambient, so it, it doesn't have a lot going on. But I think, I think it's cool. I like it. I don't listen to it a ton because it's dark ambient and because that's not the thing I normally put on, but on the occasion I want to. Uh, yeah, 
It's cool. It's got it's got cool songs. I really like. Uh, what the fuck is it? Twenty eight ghosts for? I think that's the one. That's people like a lot. One ghost one is great too. That's the only two songs I remember the the way they sound. The slip. This is another experimental one. Ghosts one to four is very experimental and very collaborative, and it was made with, with like 10 weeks, no overthinking uh, kind of mentality. This was made in four weeks, I think. Pretty quickly. It was going to be an EP, but it expanded into more than that. And as such, it's not very polished. And it was actually released for free. Interestingly, their newest albums, Ghosts 5 and 6, were released for free as well. Um... A lot of people overlooked it because it's simple, it doesn't have a ton going on if you don't look any further than the surface. You know, it's just a 10 tracks album, it's unpolished, it was uh, released for free. But I found it interesting, um, particularly the second half, starting with Lights in the Sky, uh, and then going into Corona Radiator, The Four of Us Are Dying, and Demon Seed. I thought that progression was interesting, and it conjured certain... Uh, certain images for me. And those other just catchy, good songs, you know, Echoplex, Discipline. I liked Head Down. Head Down was like a, was like the line begins to blur from With Teeth in a lot of ways. I've heard it described as the poor man's uh, line begins to blur, but I like it more. Okay, Hesitation Marks. This is a cool album. Another one that's not very liked. I think, oh, The Slip, the slip is actually the one that I, I hear described most often as the underrated album. Um, the year series, the overrated one, and this is the one that people don't talk about a lot in the community, because I spent a lot of time in the community, um, for a while. Hesitation Arcs is straight electronic. Uh, Nine Inch Nails has, has been always, you know, rock and roll. Maybe it's really electronic. There's always been heavy electronic elements. Maybe it's industrial, you know, it's harsh. Um, Hesitation Marks is more like Nine Inch Nails, I think, than the Slipper Ghosts were. In some ways, more than Year Zero and the With Teeth were, um, or more like their 90s stuff What I is what I mean to say. Really like the coloring here. But, uh... A lot of people didn't like it because it's it's probably the least liked one, along with Ghosts, because it's, um, it's straight, it's straight electronic, there's no rock in there. Even on the songs, <clears throat> on the album that a lot of people don't like, like Running, um... A lot of people find that boring. I really like running. Um, yeah, I like most of their albums. The only one I don't like is Pretty Hate Machine. Another new one, Ghosts 5 and 6. They're good. Uh, they're really long, though. They're, they're really long. And uh, they're really slow. Really slow. Ghosts 1 to 4 works because it's it's 36 songs that are all just a couple minutes long, so it keeps things interesting as it goes forward. If you're not into a song, it's whatever, it's going to be over in a minute or two. It's, it's, it's got a lot of variety, and that's interesting, but Ghosts 5 and 6 have 15 songs and 8 songs, and they're all over an hour, and the songs are really, really fucking long. I think one of them is like 12, like 15 minutes or something. Like Ghost 6... Go Six is a uh, is an hour and twenty five minutes long, and it's it's just, it's just so slow. It's too. Slow. I I think it's good. I like it. It's uh it's disturbing. I find it unsettling. It it conveys paranoia and anxiety in an effective way that makes me feel <laughs> mildly anxious when I listen to it, and I I can't just put it on. And that's a valuable thing for music to do, and it can make you feel something. You want that but I don't put it on a lot because it's just so long and it's so slow. Now we get into the trilogy. They released a trilogy of EPs each year, 2016 to 18, um, that all uh, tied into this overall theme of how do I relate to the world? How do I fit into it? You know, um, And each album had a different kind of take on, on that very general concept, you know, what's going on, why are things like this for me? Um, 
very, very interesting work. Probably the most interesting since the Fragile. Not the actual events. If this isn't... Uh, if the Fragile isn't my second favorite album, this is. This is fascinating. It's so unique. Um, I have never heard an album like this. Nothing has done for me what this album does. It's very, very interesting. It's It's really... conceptually like oh god the way this is structured is odd like these are lyrics but they're sideways so, so you have to like do this um yeah so with the, the concept, uh, this kind of takes, takes the idea that, you know, it's, it's the problem is, is you and it's, it's, or it kind of, it's, it's in your, it's in your head and it's a very internal, like, album. It feels, uh, schizophrenic, if that's the right word for it, which it might not be, but that's the word that comes to mind when I hear this album is schizophrenia. At Violence is also a really cool album, um, very beautiful in a lot of ways. This is probably my favorite cover art. You can see it here. One of my favorite parts of any Nine Inch Nails album is uh, the transition of the lovers into This Isn't the Place, which is just stunningly gorgeous. Uh, the production is through the roof. Yeah. Yeah, not a lot, uh, not too much going on in here. You can't really see that too well. The, the sound is just so satisfying. Um, really, really fucking cool album. I mean, it takes the idea that the 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 problem is is more external. You know, the world around me isn't real. It's like a simulation. So that, that's, that's what this is. That's what this is. This is like the machine. And then Bad Witch. Bad Witch takes the idea that it's just humanity. We're all, we're all stuck in the dirt. We're, we're destined to fail. We're all fucked up. Um, which appeals to me, actually. I, I'm, I, I tend to be very cynical. Um... Yeah, Nine Inch Nails is a very, it's my favorite band because the, I I connect so much to their concepts. Whether it's concepts in like deranged mental health, it's concepts um, like on the trilogy. You know, it's always really interesting musically and conceptually. I love the lyrics. I love Trent's vocals. He, he's one of the two singers that I, whose, whose vocals I just find like comforting in a way. I guess because I've, I've listened to so much of it. It's a comfort. It's a comfort, and there's so much. Uh, Nine Inch Nails is uh, is a band that is so rewarding to be a fan of. You get so much out of it because because Trent has done so much to. Uh, for one thing, live albums. You're into live stuff. He's done a lot to preserve that. Um, it's always been about the art. It's always been about music, making something new, making something fresh and interesting. Um, and he has so much music, and there's so much variety for all these different moods, but it all sounds like Nine Inch Nails, except for Pretty Hate Machine. <laughs> that doesn't sound like then. Um, With Teeth sounds so different from Hesitation Marks. Add Violence, you know, sounds so different from the fucking Fragile. Broken sounds so different from, you know, Year Zero. Uh, but it's it's... Really, really interesting. Um, Nine Inch Nails is a very special band to me that I connect to on, on a deep level that I was not aware that I could connect to any kind of music. You know, like the concepts that he deals with from, you know, reality, not being like real, being like a simulation, um, to the, 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 the severe mental decline, you know, of, of the downward spiral, um, stripping away every, every, every piece of you, your personal relationships, your, your religion, your, your, you and becoming something else, you know, uh, it's just, 
it's it's just so it's so fascinating to me. Um, yeah, music is something that's very special to me, and I'm very very into, and I, I think I connect to on on a deep level that I feel like a lot of people don't. Music, I, I can't just throw it on. Well, I I mean I can, but it depends on what it is, you know. Um, which can lead to sensitivity about it, admittedly. Um, I guess that's just an issue I have with a lot of things. Uh, the past year or two, growing, growing sensitivity, just difficulty in, in dealing with more things. Um, but I feel like Trent Reznor understands the, the feeling of feeling like shit all the time. Feeling like you don't fit in, feeling alone, feeling frustrated, you know, feeling uh, <laughs> fucking horny all the time. Uh, frustration, uh, anxiety, depression, addiction, all those things are, are and, and not fitting in, are, are these very big themes that, that Trent incorporates into his music a lot. And although I can't personally relate to every area of that, I, I can connect to the overall ideas and the, 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 the pain conveyed because I've, I've had to deal with depression for the last several years. Um, and that's when I got into Nine Inch Nails after, after depression had really set in. And I've always had uh, autism and ADHD, and that's that's something that does ostracize you a little bit. Um, not a ton in my case, because I think most people can't wouldn't be able to tell that I have autism. But it, it's it's a feeling, and it's it it you know I go out, and it's like uh, I have to mask in a way. You know that that's a common thing for people with autism, and. Um, You know, when you have autism and ADHD, there's just kind of a a degree of frustration and a degree of, of separation that you feel from a lot of society, um, which doesn't have to be severe. It doesn't have to go on forever. It's not necessarily a totally inherent thing, but it is something I've, I've felt, and not just because of those disorders, just, you know, in a general sense. Um, depression's the main thing. And it just feels like Trent knows how that feels and the way he conveys it is, uh, it, it hurts and it's, it's beautiful and it, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and there's so much of it. He's such a satisfying person to, to be a fan of. Like I said, um, he does so many interviews, for example, and I love hearing him talk about his music. He's very articulate. Um, and he's, there, there's so much, there's so many deep tracks, you know, buying remix albums, buying singles is actually worth it a lot of the time because there's a lot of stuff on those albums. Um, that's, that's worth listening to if you're a big fan, you know, like, like slipping away and, uh, you know, whatever, closer to God, metal, uh, I didn't mention what I thought of Bad Witch actually. Um, it's not to say I like it. It's my least favorite of the trilogy for sure. I find the pacing is off. I think it starts out strong with Shit Mirror and Ahead of Ourselves. Great songs. It goes into Play the Goddamn Part, which is great. It's kind of an odd pace change, but okay. Then it comes back with God Break Down the Door, which is a very fast song and it's interesting, but I'm not, it doesn't really musically grip me as much. The really weird decision is when it goes from that into I'm Not From This World, which is my favorite song in the album and I love it. But pacing wise, playing this like instrumental track and then this like really fast track, you know, it's like, okay, the album's coming back. We're, we're coming back to the area that the first two songs were in. But then we go out of it again with I'm Not From This Word, which is like a slow, very anxiety inducing kind of song. <clears throat> and then Over and Out, which is like one of my least favorite Nine Snails songs, actually. Um, so pacing wise, it's off, but four of the six songs are great. It does have great songs, but I find this album, it doesn't really flow in the way that not the actual events or even, uh, add violence does. Definitely talked about a lot, a little more than Nine Inch Nails, I suppose, but that's kind of the core of the channel. It's just kind of an outlet to talk about shit, whatever's on the mind, so. Um. Yeah. Nine Inch Nails is cool, I like them. Hope you have a good day.